Hey guys, it's me, the Bombay Chef Varun Namdar, and welcome to Get Curry. Have you heard of chicken malai tikka? I'm sure you've heard of. You may have eaten it, you may have made it yourself, you may have ordered it from a restaurant. What's important here and why this question primarily is because chicken and malai are such a wonderful combination. Today, in similar vein, I thought I'll use the two ingredients and make a cutlet, chicken malai cutlet. And trust me, this is going to surprise you. Let's begin. Trust me when I say chicken malai cutlets are possibly one of the simplest cutlets you will ever make with chicken. Very simple few ingredients. Of course, chicken and malai play a wonderful and a primary role in this. But what also plays a quintessential role is chicken stock. What you need to do is take choice of cut. So basically, you can take either all breast or thigh or leg or a combination of everything and cook it in water. What you need to do is once the chicken is cooked, you need to debone it. The bones, of course, go in the garbage can. The boned chicken or the boneless chicken gets finely chopped or shredded. We keep that aside, and the remaining stock is kept for the recipe. Very interestingly, for a cutlet recipe and not for a curry recipe. Let's begin with heating the pan on high flame, and to this, I'm going to add in salted butter. While the butter is just about to melt, I'm also going to add in chopped red onions. While the onions are getting sautéed in butter, I'm going to take the chicken stock and to this, I'm going to add in cornstarch. For this, of course, you need to follow the detailed recipe which is available in the description box below. To this, I'm also going to add in malai or fresh cream. We need to mix all this well. Of course, you need to begin very slowly because the cornstarch immediately goes and settles at the bottom. Stir this, ensure that this entire mixture is lump-free. Now this mixture, of course, because it has stock, it has all the flavor and juices. It also has the fat from the chicken. A very interesting take on a cutlet. Once this is mixed well, we're going to add this to the onions which have just begun wilting. Imagine chicken stock, malai, onions, butter, boneless chicken. Just can't go wrong. Let's add in boneless chicken. Freshly chopped coriander leaves, followed by salt and pepper. If you've added salt while cooking the chicken, do this with extreme caution. Pepper, lots of it or less, completely personal. Well, I like a little more pepper in this recipe because otherwise there's no other flavoring as such. Well, if you want, you can add in finely chopped green chilies, chili flakes, a touch of garam masala. Uh, but how much ever you add, it's all going to be like an add-on. For this recipe, really, nothing is required. No ginger, no garlic. Nothing, just basic few ingredients. Let's whack the flame on high and start stirring this entire mixture. You need to scrape the sides as well as the bottom because now what's going to happen is I've not added potato or potato starch or refined flour, which quintessentially goes in a cutlet recipe. I've added cornstarch. Now what is going to happen with this is it's going to convert the slurry into a thick mass, exactly the way we make our Indo-Chinese recipes or sauces. Keep stirring, ensure that this does not burn at the bottom or on the sides of the pan. This is going to take five minutes to start clumping and coming together. Once this leaves the pan like so, we're going to transfer this in a plate. If you're making this, of course, in a larger quantity, you can spread this on a tray. Ensure that this now cools down completely once this comes to room temperature, in fact, you can also transfer this in the fridge for like an hour or so. Let's spread this and just allow this to come down to room temperature. Our chicken mixture has cooled down completely and wonderfully well. Time to give it one final mix. After which, I'm going to take little scoops or lemon-sized balls like so clump them together and dab them lightly in breadcrumbs. Now this is a complete optional step. You want to just pan fry this like so. Choice is completely yours and it also tastes wonderfully well. I'm just taking it to another level and crumbing these. You can also use vermicelli, semolina. Choice is completely yours. Similarly, let's start making the rest of the shapes of the cutlets. 
Our cutlets are shaped and ready. Now the two things you can do here. One is they can be directly fried and they can directly be served to the guests. Secondly, these can go in the freezer and be served or fried whenever you have your guest at home. Remember this. Two ways. I'm opting for the first one, which is immediately frying it. Let's do that, which is very simple. Again, this needs no theory or practical of any kind. A little bit of oil, medium high flame, and allow the griddle to heat up. Once the pan heats up, let's pan fry these cutlets. Once the bottom becomes nice and crisp and golden brown, we'll gently give it a flip. Now, if you think about it, there's nothing to cook in this recipe because everything is pre-cooked. All you want to do here is bring that nice, scrumptious outside layer. The outside layer has become nice, crisp and scrumptious. Once that's done, our chicken malai cutlets are done and ready. And these straight go on the serving platter. With this, chicken malai cutlets are done and ready. Do not wait for anyone and anything to savor these. This recipe is now yours forever. Try it out. Bye for now.